Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Lab, and today we're taking a look at this HP server. I thought they got out of the server business when they spun out HPE. It's a workstation. Oh, it's just flat. Yes, okay. very flat. So it's the Z Central 4R. It's a rack mount workstation that is obviously 1U, and in a 42U rack, how many of these could you fit in there? 42. Nice. What if it was a taller 48U rack? 48. All right. So you can get really dense compute into a rack, but now the question is, why would you put your workstations in a rack? Usually it's uh, related to you want more consolidation on where the data is located, uh, maybe you want control over where the physical systems are. Um, a lot of IP theft is going around. and For sure, especially in the design engineering fields. Yeah, so consolidating where the actual data is uh, is pretty valuable to certain companies. So we can consolidate data. We can also allow for remote workforce, right? Because they've got the HP Z Central Remote Boost that'll let you use any system to remote in to this system yes. in the data center. And then we get the data center security, so whatever your policies are there, uh, backup, recovery, access to shared storage maybe would be another Heavy benefit. Filter power and battery backup and networking, all the good stuff. So all those good things that happen in a data center with traditional enterprise servers and gear now can apply to systems like this once you slam a couple of these in the rack. And like I said, when you bundle this with the uh, Z Central Remote Boost, that's really where HP starts to differentiate and pull ahead in many respects in terms of workflow collaboration and all the other benefits. And we've done a detailed dive on, uh, we did a real deep dive, we did 45 minutes on, uh, on Remote Boost. So if you're interested in learning more about that solution, we've got a, a, a deep dive there. Uh, but taking a look at the hardware, Working across the front here, we've got a couple bays in uh, in this system, and in fact, this guy here is a three and a half inch um, drive bay that we've swapped out, or our config swaps out for two. So we've got four SATA drives in the front, and then a bunch of little uh, USB and uh, and other access points across the front over There's there. Actually, he, so this this uh, well, server slash workstation design workstation please is um, a little unique in the regard of how it mounts its um, uh, power supplies which you still have redundant power access and it's not plugged in on the front it's plugged in on the back right um, but you have uh, two 675 watt power supplies uh, in the front and that's because you're left with you get a shorter footprint the CPU is kind of in the spot where the power supplies would kind of maybe go if the thing didn't have uh, support for two full height uh, GPUs. Full length anyway. Well, kind of. It gets close to it because you do have that little chop off there. Okay. So anyway, we've got our four SATA drives and our config in the front or you can do this guy as we said is a three and a half inch if you want the, uh, uh, the high capacity hard drive in there. The fans, and let's see, why don't you yank that. The CPU's got a nice beefy heat sink. It's tucked behind the power supplies. You've got four DRAM slots, right? Yeah, so you're, I mean, you can get a pretty stout configuration going. And on the back, we didn't spin this around yet, but you've got 10 gig on board with one of these ports. It uses a uh, multi-speed port, so you have uh, 1 gig, 2.5, 5, and 10 gig. Okay. And then you have a 1 gig port as well for uh, EMT management. And our config came with an extra 10 gig card on, on this uh, riser here and this big beefy RTX 8000, which is pretty close to unobtainium these days. On, yeah, uh, on the full height side. I'd almost say it's worth more than the server, so. Yeah. Workstation, please. Yeah, sorry. All right, so go ahead and yank this, because this is one thing that I think is interesting. It also has two NVMe drives, M.2, and they're tucked away. They're a little bit difficult to get to. Um, you're probably not going to be swapping these out a whole lot once the thing's built, though, and sitting in a rack anyway. Uh, but those guys are tucked here in the middle. There's a little more attention to detail for these versus how they would be in a server. How's that? Um, they actually have heat sinks and thermal um, thermal considerations taken in place. Right, and these are sort of these paperclip looking, looking dudes sort of pin them down, pin the pin the heat sink down onto the drive. Yeah, and if you had these in a uh, server, some have heat sinks on them. Others, uh, though, it's more passive cooled. And in this case, it, well, you'd be looking at it from a uh, boot drive, but in this case. The NVMe drives are really going to be used for boot as well as scratch space and other uh, 
more intensive workload since it is only sat out in the front. Right. So your applications, boots, and and maybe like you said, some scratch, and then the SATA for capacity storage, right? Yeah. Um, like you said, though, we've got the the full uh, full height, full length RTX eight thousand, and you could you could put a um, uh, a single wide in the other if you wanted another GPU and there's a wiring harness for that. So overall it's pretty dense and it's shorter than a traditional server. Uh, so it's a little fit it has a lot of to the be smaller racks. Like we had that StarTech rack in earlier sure. uh, la- well mid last year where um, it works for a lot of devices uh, until you hit a certain length and this particular uh, size would work well on that and you wouldn't have to worry about having something I mean if this is probably going to go in a data center, but if you had more of a consolidated rack in like the corner of an office, right. it would fit in those sorts of use cases. Right, but the one thing to consider, and we don't have it fired up right now, but it's not quiet. So one thing with these types of systems that are designed to be in the racks, they're designed to be cooled that way, they're designed for airflow, and uh, they're not designed for uh, audio no, you generally want to find larger fans and uh, slower rotational speed for... Um, in a tower uh, form factor. Yeah, right? for quiet uh, enjoyment of your, <laughs> uh, your system. And if you're going to slam this thing under your desk, HP's got a solution for that. If you're going to be able to direct access the, it all the time, then, then there's other things that will be a better fit. Again, this is really designed to get the workstation into the data center. And with today's more and more remote workforce, that's where uh, a Remote Boost comes in. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, the highlights here as we dive into the the system. Uh, you know, these are uh, some of the the high level benefits from uh, HP, of course, supporting Windows 10 Pro and or Linux, uh, Ubuntu certified, which is nice, and the PCIe storage in the M.2 slots that we talked about, and now these days the all new and improved sanitizable feature. So I was thinking about that, even though it is a kind of a, it seems stupid to think about, but you have a lot of uh, devices, uh, point of contact, where it might have only been cleaned once a month or so, and now you have certain scenarios where things are cleaned multiple times a day, and you could have finish start to strip off, or it, things can look ugly, uh, ugly fast. So it is a consideration point, although, I mean, even in a, the use case for this, it might, no one's gonna be hopefully touching it that often. No, although if you do interact with it directly, then then maybe a little bit more so. They're big on the uh, toolless access too, which we demonstrated there a little bit by just yanking that uh, that PCIe board. Um, but uh, you know that's another another consideration. Um, this is actually off their website. This is one of my favorite uh, fifteen second animations where they show all the pieces coming out. Uh, it would take you maybe well maybe not that long to to pull all the pieces. But point being, it's very flexible and uh, and can be pulled apart easily if you need to. HP also talks a lot about security. They've got a number of uh, physical and software based. Uh, you know, they've got an AI uh, thing with their uh, their SureSense and then some physical uh, security benefits. So just one more thing to think about for these types of workflows. And then high level specs. Uh, it feels so, you know, we keep joking and calling it a server, but it does have server esque components in there, uh, Xeon CPUs in this case. Yeah, so you can go from either a uh, four core up to an 18 core uh, CPU offering, and you can get up to 256 gigs of RAM inside of it. So, yeah, and just four DIMM slots, too. It's, you know, not a lot, but you can still crank through a pretty good RAM footprint. Yeah. Uh, Drives, there's a number of configurations. We've got two of the uh, M.2 NVMe uh, Z drives. Um, like we said, you can use those other SATA bays uh, in a number of combinations. And then, of course, we've got the RTX 8000 in our system, but they support pretty much everything you'd expect from everything you could find in the current market <laughs> yeah, environment. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, we, we did some performance work, and before we jump too fast into this, You've got some new benchmarks we're using, so we don't have a real deep uh, Yeah, they're new revisions, so a lot of um, the way we're looking at it right now is we're building on the new benchmarks versus trying to retest old systems that were sent right. back already. So, well, and the other thing, too, is that the world of rack mount workstations is really pretty small. I mean, there's Dell's got a competitive offering um, that, at least on paper, this thing well exceeds in a number of specs. Uh, others may have them, but it's not like there's 
20 of them that come rolling through the lab every year. Yeah, and so when you look at uh, accessing the system remotely, you might be remotely accessing it from a uh, work, well, your little work spot and cubicle, or you might be at home. In that case, you would probably be using a lower power system to access it. And this is get, a lot of our benchmarks are used to uh, show how it could, would compare uh, to that lower power system. Okay, so as we take a look at what we did here, we just happened to have the Z2 Mini Gen 5 as part of the refresh when the R4 was announced uh, that had run through these benchmarks. And so we don't want to get involved in uh, anyone thinking like we're comparing these head to head. This is really a portfolio view. And of course, in between there, which we don't have, would be the uh, refreshed tower workstations. And when we do, we'll update these charts. But so what do we see here just from a relative comparison basis? You're going to get probably four to five X the uh, performance. And in certain benchmarks, you might get higher, but it's going to offer a dramatic improvement of speed across the board. In spec view perf, these are the more intensive the, workstation. Well, yeah, these are the uh, graphics uh, based tests. Right. Okay. Uh, in spec workstation, this is an area where it really, this is more CPU centric and in in certain cases, it gets kind of funny when you look at these benchmarks where um, they're they're built uh, more in mind for lower core counts. So, uh, so certain areas don't um, compute as well with uh, benchmarks. And in one particular case, we had a benchmark uh, not complete uh, that was more core sensitive. It was not for lack of effort, but sometimes these benchmarks are also not as dynamic as the equipment that they're being tested on. Yeah, so there's some interesting growing pains with a lot of benchmarks these days. Okay. Uh, with our ArcGIS test, um, these are gonna be very much uh, graphics based. In this case, I mean, it just knocks the socks off of the uh, Z2 Mini, which, is to be expected, but I mean, you're looking at draw time going from like a minute and a half down to seven seconds. That's and it uh, depends on the work set though too, because this is Montreal where there was a big difference. It wasn't as pronounced in other places, like here we go, Philly, where it's about the same. Well, so it has the uh, same draw time, but you also get roughly five x the uh, frames per second. So interaction with the uh, the environment around that uh, the map itself is going to be a lot uh, smoother. And then in the uh, Portland test, this is another area where it really came down to the, um, the usability versus the uh, draw time. But again, you're going to get a lot of strong performance from this particular box versus what you'd find from a, a notebook or a other low power system that might not be as noisy. Okay, so what we end up then with is a very non-standard workstation. It's a little bit shorter than a traditional server. Uh, so it's dense, but it has maybe a little less flexibility if you were trying to repurpose a server as a remote workstation. Um, but it comes paired with um, the remote boost software from HP, which makes it really functional in terms of giving remote access to, and not just one creative, but multiple. I mean, the sharing of the systems is a big benefit of, yeah, of remote boost. Yeah, to do this with, a, uh, with any other type of enterprise server, yes, you could try and match the components and build in a virtual solution, but you're gonna have uh, a lot of licensing expenses because it's not you're not going to get that uh, HP integration there. You're going to be looking at more of a VMware or uh, other competitive offerings for uh, that solution for the, for the works for the uh, desktop, right? Yeah. So it's a really neat solution, very creative, very targeted to a specific set of users. But if you want those security benefits, those operational benefits of being able to take the workstations and putting them into the data center. This is a really well thought out solution and will do fantastic uh, with that, that specific use case. Uh, for everyone else that's doing the work locally on the machine and doesn't have the collaboration or, or machine sharing requirements that this kind of thing enables with the remote boost, then you're probably better off with something that goes under the desktop in a more traditional uh, scenario. And as we said, HP has got updates there too. So for now, great solution. For that use case, throw it in the rack, use it uh, across the world and just trade pixels instead of uh, worrying about interacting with it directly and uh, I think you'll be pretty happy. Thanks for checking out the review.